Hi, and welcome to the videos for section 4.2. Uh, there's two videos for this section, and this is the first of the two videos. In section 4.2, we're going to look at what's known as the mean value theorem. It's a pretty powerful theorem within the field of calculus. Before we get to that, we need to look at what's called Rolle's theorem. And Rolle's theorem says the following. Let f be a function that satisfies the three, the following function that satisfies the following three hypotheses. First, F is continuous on the closed interval AB. Two, F is differentiable on the open interval AB. And lastly, f of a, so the function value at one endpoint, is the same as the function value of the other endpoint. If these three things happen, Rolle's theorem then says, then there is a number c in the open interval AB such that F prime of C is equal to zero. So, I'll show you a few examples, but let's think about what this is saying. I have some function, it starts at a value, does all kinds of different stuff, ends at the same value. Rolle's theorem says that if it's continuous and if it's differentiable, and if the endpoints are the same, then at some point within that interval, the derivative is zero, meaning the slope of some line tangent to that function in there is zero, meaning what? Meaning there's going to have to be a max or a minimum. So let's look at the different types of possibilities. The first one, Let's say I have y equals 2. So if I have a function, y equals 2, starts at a, starts at b, 1, 2, it's what? It is a flat line. So in this case, actually every number between a and b has a derivative of 0, right? If the function is equal to a constant, take the derivative that's equal to 0. So every single value in that uh, interval has the derivative equal to zero. So that one's kind of just the constant case. A function is a constant, so therefore its derivative is zero everywhere. I could have the following. Start at A, end at B, and I get something that looks like that, maybe an upside down parabola. Well, there's going to be some number C between A and B where the tangent line, that's not a very good straight line, but you get the point. There's going to be a horizontal line that indicates there's a max or minim, minimum there, in this case the maximum. You could also have, so let's call it 3, where the parabola is the other way around. So A to B comes down, goes back up, but they end at the same value, whatever that function is. So this is f of a, which is equal to f of b. Same thing here, and again, there's going to be some point c where that derivative is equal to zero. And the fourth possibility
So again, A and B have the same function value. Sorry, that's running downhill on you there. And I actually have what? I have two numbers. Call it C1 and C2 within that interval where the derivative is equal to zero, where there's a horizontal line, where there is a max or a minimum uh, value of that function. So that's the idea behind Rolle's theorem. And we need to use that for the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem says the following. And you'll often see this abbreviated as MVT, mean value theorem. So this says the following. Let f be a function that satisfies the following hypotheses. The first, f is continuous on the closed interval a, b. Two, f is differentiable on the open interval a, b. So if we have these two conditions, then the mean value theorem says the following. So then there is a number C such that First off, f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, or equivalently, if I multiply this equation by both sides by b minus a, what happens? It, it's gone on the right side, so the left side gets, mi uh, gets multiplied by that. So, or another way you might see it written, and the way we'll probably be using it here is f prime of c times b minus a is equal to f of b minus f of a. And again, I'm definitely not going to prove this one on video. It'll take way too much of our time. Um, but the proof is on pages, yep, pages 212 to 213. So again, you can see how, and again, he'll be using Rolle's theorem, how using Rolle's theorem he can get to uh, this statement here. And what the mean value theorem does, why we even use this, is that the mean value theorem, this gives us the line All right, gives us the parallel line, well, the line parallel to the secant line connecting the points A and B. And we'll see this in our next example here. But that's what the mean value theorem does. It kind of gives us a shortcut of figuring this stuff out. So it gives us the point on the graph where the line parallel to the endpoints where that parallel line falls. All right, so let's look at an example. If you need any of this, go ahead and pause. Otherwise, we'll move on here. We'll wrap up video one.
So the example, we're going to let the function, let f of x equal x to the third minus x, a is 0, b is 2. So we want to use the mean value theorem here to find out where is the line parallel to the secant of these endpoints. So if we're going to use mean value theorem, the first thing is what? Is f continuous and is f differentiable? And yes, because it's a, a polynomial, it's continuous along every, it's continuous along every point, but specifically it's continuous between 0 and 2 and is therefore differentiable between 0 and 2. So then, we're going to be needing this formula here. So we need f of a, f of b, as well as the derivative. So f of a is just f of 0. Plug in 0 here, 0 minus 0 is 0. And f of b is f of 2, which is what? 8 minus 2. So 6, and then the derivative, f prime of x, is equal to 3x squared minus 1. We'll just take the derivative of our function, we get 3x squared minus 1. So now we need to find the point C where this line, parallel line, falls. So if I use uh, B of the two options here, I have f prime of C. Well, f prime of C is what? I just take the derivative and plug in C anywhere I have an x. So that means this is 3C squared minus 1 times B minus A, 2 minus 0. So this is B, this is A, this is f prime of C. And then f of b, so this whole thing equals f of b, which is 6, minus f of a, which is 0. Now I just need to simplify and solve for c. So this part here, 2 minus 0, that's equal to 2. So if I distribute 2 here, 3c squared times 2 is 6c squared. <coughs> and 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. Equals 6 minus 0 is 6. So now solve for c, add 2 to both sides, 6c squared is 8, divide both sides by 6, that tells me what, c squared is equal to 8 over 6, which if I simplify this, divide both by 2, is 4 over 3, but that's c squared, c squared is 4 thirds, so if I take the square root of both sides, that means what, c is, and be careful here, plus or minus, the square root of this guy. Square root of 4 over square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2 over square root of 3. But I'm looking what? What's my interval? My interval is 0 to 2. So I only want the values of c that fall within this interval. So I don't have any negative possibilities. So in this case, my value c is equal to positive 2 over square root of 3. And so again, this is telling us the point where the line parallel to the line connecting the endpoints falls. So if we were to graph this function, So again, we're going from 0 up to 2. So this thing would actually come down here, cross at 1, and then head up here to 2, which we know is what? 6. F of 0 is 0. So if I was to connect the two endpoints with that line there, the point where the parallel line, if I bring that down until it creates a parallel line here, whoops, that's not parallel. So 
this is coming up to six. So we have connecting these endpoints. If we bring this line down, parallel line down, it's going to hit somewhere around here. And this point right here is equal to two over the square root of three. And that's what the mean uh, value theorem gives us. That point in the interval where if we connect the endpoints and we want the line parallel to it, that's where it occurs. And that's what we found there. So that's the end of video one. Uh, come on back, we'll look at the second video uh, for this section.